Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. We're shifting today from Buddhas and bananas to the blueprint. Jesus is our blueprint. He is the Father's design. And we are shifting now in our reading of the book Toxic Love by Malcolm Smith to begin to shift into how the love life was meant to be lived. So join me in this shift. As I am traveling through Europe, let's continue to travel through the truth of the blueprint. Hey everybody, I am so glad that we are together on this Good Friday. And again, I'm bringing you greetings from Poland as I am uh, making my way through uh, this part of my Europe journey. So I am reading the last section called True Love Brings Divine Wisdom. Um to you from Toxic Love, Chapter 3. This is the last section. And again, I have to say, I, I thoroughly enjoy reading this and being provoked in my own life. And of course, I don't want to keep that to myself, so I'm going to pass this on, and I pray that it provokes you deeper in your life with the Father. And we see here uh, that Uh, Jesus does not try to rescue everyone from their failures. Uh, He does not try to keep us from the embarrassments that we oftentimes cause ourselves. When we think we know better than God, we think we know uh, how things should be, right? And we look at, uh, from the scripture, we look at how Jesus really interacted with people. Uh, And then when we compare it alongside oftentimes to what it is that we try to do, uh, and in our dealings with people, we realize, wow, how far off the mark we are, right? So just let me read this to you, uh, and then you'll see a little bit about what I'm referring to. It's called True Love Brings Divine Wisdom, out of Chapter 3, Toxic Love by Malcolm Smith. Observe how Jesus dealt with the problem person in the group. Peter was known for his mindless prattle and the ability to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Now he is boasting of how he will never forsake Jesus, and at the same time he is cruelly accusing everyone else of leaving him, uh, Jesus, in his time of need. The Spirit revealed to Jesus that Satan would sift Peter like wheat on the threshing floor, and in that spiritual nightmare Peter would deny he ever knew Jesus. Knowing that Jesus loves Peter at this crisis moment, how does real love express himself? Jesus saw the others as being infinitely loved by his Father and having to make their own choices about that love, choices he could not and would not make for them. When the real Messiah turns up among us, he does not interfere with anyone's life by protecting them from their own decisions. Only false, toxic messiahs do that. Jesus supported them with counsel he received from his Abba and also with prayer, but not by trying to make their decisions for them or by protecting them from the results of their choices. If his love had been a toxic counterfeit, he might have said, Peter, it's been a long day. I want you to stay home tonight. There might be some trouble later on, and I think you would be better off getting a good night's sleep. He would have fixed Peter's problem by taking the responsibility to shield Peter from himself. Or he might have prayed, Father, don't let this happen to Peter. We have kept his big mouth out of the press, and you know he doesn't mean half of what he says. His problem is our family secret. (laughs) He means well, and we don't want to embarrass him and all of us with him, do we? Toxic lovers forever make excuses and seek to cover for the person from whom they seek approval. 
nor does he tell Peter that he will make it all right and that after the denial, he can just go home to bed and Jesus will make a few phone calls and cover for him, paying John off to keep him from telling the rest of the disciples. Furthermore, Jesus did not tell Peter that he was not responsible because his fearfulness was an inherited weakness in his genes. Foolish! But false toxic love will go to any lengths to shield the person it seeks to help from the pain of facing their responsibility as a person made in God's image. This counterfeit love has one goal, and that is to make the other person feel happy, for it is in their smile that it finds its own happiness. For Jesus, however, loving the one who was about to deny him meant a number of things. First, he assured Peter that he would pray for him, giving him the support he really needed. Jesus gave him encouragement that there was hope after the sin was over and dealt with. Then he left Peter to grow up by being forced to see himself and make his own decisions as a responsible adult in the light of the Father's love. Luke twenty two, thirty one through 34 When Peter fell, Jesus did not reject him or heap condemnation or say, I told you so. Rather, he was there to move him into a new life of responsible loving. John 21, 15 through 17. Now, friends, I can tell you that this way right here is what saved my life. 27 years ago, when God certainly attempted to speak to me, to warn me, but then he fully allowed me to follow my own way, my own decisions, my own thinking. And when it had devastating results, bringing great pain to other people, He very powerfully used it all to deliver me from myself and unto him. Now, I want to say to you as a living witness, there is no greater love than the love that the Father has for us. And it does not come to rescue us from ourselves, but to deliver us from ourselves and unto him. There are things I share with you that come from this total perspective of having lived through the same kind of deliverance that Peter needed to. And I would submit to you that we all need to. Every one of us needs this. And we need to uh, live through it for our own deliverance. But then, my friends... It will definitely equip us to identify with the Father and what He's doing in other people and to stop getting in the way by trying to rescue people and protect them and keep us all from embarrassment and this and that. My friends, we need to know His way. We need to live His way because it is the best way and the only way for the sons to fully mature unto the Father. So as I close this out, I pray that uh, we will let Holy Spirit bring the deepest conviction to us of um, how absolute human love is against the Father so that we will turn and let Holy Spirit pour the love of the Father into us. And I promise you by the Scripture and as a living witness It will transform us within, and it will transform the way that we live uh, and are sent into the world. We are not of the world, but we are being sent to it. And the world, my friends, does not have to appreciate us or get us or agree with us for us to be faithful to the Father. And this hour of history is going to be crying out uh, for those who are uh, the very message that they bring. So that we don't go out in some self-righteous, puffed up um, way, preaching down to others like we know nothing about what they need to be delivered from, as though we are some separate breed 
uh, right, and that we know best. No, that's the human, that's the good side of human love that's all puffed up. The, the humbling work of God by the power of the cross and then the imparted way of the cross into us causes us to go into our assignments in the full deliverance and the full love of the Father, have, seeing things from his perspective, being prepared and, and literally um, um, conditioned and matured and developed for the specifics of our assignment by him so that we can go in and remain loyal to him and be the truest lover of people that we can be, that we will speak truth even if it costs us, <laughs> right? I mean, that this is the way, my friends, and that we will go in as Jesus with a full love for people that comes from the Father, but a full and absolute cross-bred vengeance upon the enemy so that the enemy will be exposed, so that people will see their need, right? Their need for the Father and the work of the cross, right? These are things that cannot be humanly produced. They are produced by the Spirit of God working within us. For we need to go forward in bold, confident love that cannot be threatened, guilted, manipulated, right? That we go in clear that that the very... Um, spirit that comes against us, the spirit of this world, that we understand it. Why? Because we've been delivered from it. And that we, in the same ability that Jesus had to be able to love people and yet never fall for the the, the um, snares of the enemy. See, that, that wisdom has to be developed in us the same way it was in Jesus. So here is my encouragement to you. Stay with the Father. And let this magnificent, overwhelming work of the cross and the way of the cross be worked in you daily, right? It's all overwhelming. You think, wow, how are we ever going to get through that? Well, just yield to the Father, abide, stay with him day, day in and day out, and he will accomplish it. My friends, he is well able, well able to raise his sons, well able to make it all work together. That's his that's his to do, not ours, right? Ours is to stay with him, to remain, to abide, and to trust. And where does that come from? The very nature of Jesus within you. So here we go, my friends. We continue on this journey together here on Tent Talk. I'm so grateful for each of you and uh, am glad that you uh, are here. And as I am continuing uh, in my um, April uh, days here in Europe, I'm uh, going from Poland to to Germany and then back into Poland and then home. Um, There are so many things that I am learning and living in and deepening in. Remember, my friends, nobody has arrived. The further in we go, the more dependent we become. The love of God matures us. The love of God is what activates and energizes our faith in him. And the love of God is teaching us and encouraging us in these days. So let's stay with him uh, because no one, my friends, has arrived. And in the kingdom of God, our maturity is in direct proportion to our dependency upon him. Stay with him. Love you all. Until next time. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.